friends, welcome to my channel, very good to see you here as always and today as you guessed from the title we're gonna talk about 5 things I wish I know before I moved to New York City. So just to give you a little bit of a backstory, I actually been living in New York City for over 5 years so I assume I can call myself a New Yorker already and even though I love love New York City very much with all my heart. If you follow me on social media, you probably noted that. But there are just some things which I didn't expect. And moving from Eastern Europe, uh, they were surprising to me, especially after watching lots of movies and show and even you know basing on uh, videos of some youtubers who are based in New York City I sort of had this perfect picture a uh, very romanticized picture of New York City and today I'm just gonna spill some tea so the first thing I would like to mention is that there are actually five boroughs in New York City there is not just Manhattan there's five boroughs, so we have uh, Manhattan, we have Queens, Brooklyn, um, Staten Island, and uh, also we have Long Island, so and Bronx. So Long Island is not part of, part of the boroughs, but it's it still belongs uh, to New York. So it's fascinating, and I see it all the time that people move. New York City and they just imagine that you know the whole life is just sort of walls around one tiny island Manhattan but it's not true and actually um, you know there's so much more to it each borough has some unique uh, things to offer and everything is very um, unique and full of history and when you think New York is not necessarily that concrete jungle everyone knows of there's a lot lots of historical areas a lot of beautiful nature and uh, things like that so um, definitely much more to it than uh, just you know your typical Fifth Avenue there's nothing wrong with it of course but just keep that in mind that maybe <clears throat> if you are considering moving to New York City, maybe you would prefer some other area rather than Manhattan because Manhattan is very crowded, very overpopulated, very expensive and to be honest with you, not quite a great place to live. So, which brings me to my second point is that um, rent is very high. So when you think that New York City is very expensive, it's 100% true, it is very expensive, but also rent uh, keeps growing and even when I moved five years ago, um, I think you still could rent a room, right? So you rent an apartment, but you share, so you have your separate room, but you share the apartment with other people and sometimes it can be two, three people. Uh, in my case, I shared an apartment, uh, let me think, with three more people, total strangers, uh, I mean some people are lucky enough if they have friends and families they can rent out with them, but in my case I didn't know anyone, so for me it was total strangers, and um, back then you could have rent, um, rent a room for um, I would say like somewhere between 600 to a thousand, you know, depending on the area, depending what kind of room, what is the size, do you have access to your private bathroom or not, and things like that. Um, and now I noticed that even for rooms, the prices kind of go from thousand and above. So, um, <clears throat> as it's just what I'm seeing, I might be wrong, I'm not in real estate, so don't quote me on that, but definitely prices on the rent are. Um, very high and they just keep growing and you know the same goes um, for apartments in any area really and um, the another thing that you know the market everyone is constantly looking for apartments so it's kind of hard to find any apartment and needless to say a good one so when we see all of those videos uh, you know where people show their apartments 
and they, I don't know, paying let's say $2,000 and I'm like, oh my god, for that? For that teeny tiny space? What is it, crazy? I was like, not crazy, it's just the reality of New York City. If you want to live in a nice place, you gotta pay. Or, I mean, you know, some people get lucky with um, incredible deals, but you constantly have to think quickly and it's a, just a very competitive market. Uh, thing number three is that subway is not very reliable in New York City, unfortunately. So when I moved, I uh, used to live in an area in Queens, which is called Ridgewood, and it's a very nice area, <clears throat> but there was only one train uh, by my house, and it constantly broke, and also it didn't run on weekends, and it didn't run at nights. So for example, I have to get home after 11 p.m. I was pretty much screwed. I would have to take another train and then transfer to the bus. And then I remember like waiting at midnight in February um, outside. So it was not underground station, but it was um, outdoor station, station like upstairs. And I remember standing there and just freezing. It was so cold and it took probably like half an hour for a uh, subway to arrive, which was horrible. So it was very inconsistent. Sometimes um, on weekends, I remember my train was running every two hours. So if I wanted to go to Manhattan or to any other borough or actually anywhere, I would have to take a cab or just wait for two hours. Um, but you know, things are not that terrible. And now um, where I live, I do have some options in terms of subway and it runs much smoother. I think it runs like every 15-20 minutes, which is great. But then again, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. I've been late to work multiple, multiple times over the past five years simply because you never know what's gonna happen. Uh, there's some problems with tracks, there's some problems with signals, there's always some kind of a problem with subway. So um, it's, it is a great way of transportation because it's relatively cheap. Um, right now, I believe it's 275 if they didn't um, raise it. Because when I moved, I believe it was 225 cents. So it keeps, keeps growing slightly, um, but also it's just um, it's a great transportation because it, it can take you almost everywhere in New York City, but it's just not always reliable, unfortunately. Thing number four is that I heard that New Yorkers are very rude and let me debunk that myth, they are not rude, but I have to say that the majority of New Yorkers are constantly on the edge. They are living a very busy lifestyle and I became the person as well when you're constantly running, when you're constantly doing things, you have projects, you have side hustles, you have people to meet, things to do and stuff like that. Um, you are on the edge, you know, you commuting every day uh, to work um, and obviously right now as we are in uh, stay-at-home mode still uh, but <clears throat> even now, you know, I know that some people are not that fortunate to live in the very quiet areas and I can um, imagine that, you know, living in a big apartment building with constant car noise and ambulances and neighbors and all of that can be very stressful so I understand why people are constantly on the edge and they ready to snap at any moment so that's just something to consider but I gotta say that if someone really needs help New Yorkers are very um, very helpful actually they gen genuinely care uh, you know if you ask for directions, how can I get there, if you're lost or you just need some help, um, they actually gonna stop, pause whatever they're doing and they're gonna help you out for sure. Um, and then the thing number five is um, people don't really have time to hang out. And what I mean by that is, you know, you watch How I Met Your Mother or Friends or any kind of show, like even Sex in the City, and you see people constantly hanging out in bars, constantly having brunches, constantly, you know, gathering with friends every day. And I used to think the same thing, but it's just not possible because if you live in a busy lifestyle of a busy adult in a big city, it doesn't matter if it's New York City or any other city, 
just don't have time to do all of those things and people just don't hang out that often and um, there is definitely a culture of happy hour which um, here means that um, every weekday from Monday to Friday usually in certain hours I would say it's like somewhere between 3 to 7 or 8 p.m. you have um, discounts on drinks so people do have those uh, social gatherings for sure but I don't think it's every day I mean at least I don't know everyone who does it quite frequently and um, it's just you know people you need to schedule those sort of things you cannot just you know hey let's all gather in the bar um, so that's just a big myth and um, people are as busy in New York City as in any other city so those were my top things which I wish I know before moving to New York City if you live in New York City please let me know if you agree with those or not again I'm just expressing my opinion and my view on things and if you never been to New York City tell me about what are you most excited to see what are you most excited to try um, in comments down below don't forget to give me a big thumbs up I really really appreciate those and please don't forget to subscribe so you can see more and more videos coming from me in the future and I promise there is gonna be a lot. See you next time, bye bye!